This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. I am on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking, so join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week we're staying in France, but heading just a little north up the west coast for a look at a truly innovative new EcoCat design, the Mod X70. Today we will, one, Review its specifications, pricing, and layout against three similar new vessels. Two, do a full tour asking what would Sylvia say. Three, naval gaze at innovations and or technologies that make this a truly sustainable adventure machine. Four, have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables. And five, finally, give it a Dave score and compare the results to all our previously reviewed yachts. As always, all this fun will be sandwiched between a pairing of wine and a work of art from the same region as the guest yacht, in an effort to capture the culture and people who gave birth to these wonderful vessels. Waves, wine, art, and ideas. What a civilized way to spend 30 minutes. So let's get going. From high above Vancouver, we head east across North America and the Atlantic to the west coast of France in the home of last time's guest yacht, the Bally Catsmart by Katana. From here, we hop a little north to the yards of ocean development and this week's guest yacht, the wildly innovative Mod X70. Finally, we hop southeast to the vineyards of this week's wine pairing, Terrain Côte de Main Milieu Saint Visage. The Vignoble des Bois Vendôme estate spreads over 35 hectares across the hillsides on the banks of the Cher River. Its rich, complex soils ensuring the production of a range of wines that are varied and rich in color, while supporting vines that encompass the young to the ageless. The estate has been run by the Mario family for generations. Jackie handling the reins and the vines to his son Jean-Francois in 2000 who along with his wife Emily have committed themselves to the cause. Jean-Francois who studied en Ambrose and then <clears throat> in Bordeaux before training in famous vineyards across the country timelessly works the soils plowing, cutting heavily and harvesting by hand. Jean-Francois and Emily continue to produce wines of the highest quality each with their own identity that perfectly adheres to the Mario family ethos, honesty, passion, and excellence. The Cote or Malbec grape brings a very deep and concentrated garnet color. This variety is also grown in the Bordeaux region where it is blended in the wine from some of the greatest chateaus. Very ripe aromas on the nose, black currant, crushed red berries with notes of prunes and violets. Very persistent finish. Best enjoyed on a full-bodied, rich and spicy dish, game dishes and strong cheeses. Also great as a glass of wine with friends in front of the fireplace during long winter evenings. Domaine Mario is growing a very ancient vine selection which gives to their wine intensity and concentration. Ooh, that's lovely. Let's go have a look at that boat. Cheers. Having our first look at this brave new boat, she's really very attractive. Look at the lines, the swept bow, actually reminiscent of the HH-52, but that rather avant-garde top there, which hides those uh, um, sails, which both inflate as well as extend on telescopic uh, uh, carbon fiber uh, masts. Now, this boat is a true 
electric boat. These guys have gone the distance. They uh, are no compromise. There is no diesel on board. There are no backup generators. There's no poofy stuff like that. This is a real electric eco yacht that's driven by electric motors and the wind only. An absolutely fantastic innovation uh, in the sailing world today. Looking at the vast amount of solar on the rooftop there, I mean just spectacular and those amazing sails which actually swivel all the way around. We'll have a quick look at that. Now let's talk about the power on board. This has two pitch adjustable propellers that will drive three kilowatts per hour at 10 knots and provide up to 35% of the energy mix. In addition to the electric drives, there is of course 250 square meters of, a, of inflatable wing pr propulsion which by nature is so much superior to your average sail in that in this case it delivers 35 percent additional power versus the same square footage uh, in standard sails there's no flogging uh, they're fully adjustable so you, you really can literally sail out of your anchorage sail out of your marina in this because of the level of control that you have in addition to that we have um, two 40, 40 kilowatt um, electric motors. We actually have four uh, 20 kilowatt electric motors. Uh, so you have uh, 80 kilowatts of uh, motor drive. You have an astonishing 230 kilowatt hour uh, battery bank. And that will give you an estimated 100 miles of autonomy on just your battery drive. Looking at the actual uh, solar generating power capacity, here you've got 4,000 watts of solar on the cabin top. You've got um, a total of 70 square meters of solar panels aboard. Uh, additionally, the hulls themselves are uh, partially from biosourced materials. So 38% biosourced e epoxy resin and pet fo uh, foams, 40% uh, uh, pet foams recycled. Uh, so promoting biosourced materials in the hulls themselves. So again, this is a unique boat in that it is true to what it promises. This is a true sailing solar boat with zero diesel on board, zero fossil fuels on board. They've really gone out to the edge on this one and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, let's talk about this inflation technology. So uh, the inflatable envelope technology allows the desired NACA profile to be achieved while ensuring retractability. This is not uh, a symmetric blow up wing sail such as the one developed by Michelin. This is an asymmetric sail with all of the efficiencies and power that come with it. Uh, the telescopic motorized carbon mast is designed to automatically deploy with the inflatable wing. All hoisting, reefing, and furling operations, as well as navigation control of the wing and flap orientation, are fully automated. The connectivity module enables the visualization of all parameters and possibly the remote control for maintenance operations, if you can imagine that. The airfoil is balanced and places itself in the best position to maximize the driving force. The aerodynamic center stays stable in every wind condition. No compression forces in the rigging which allows the use of a retractable mast. No leech tension. The sheet is only used to adjust the wing in its best angle. The freestanding rigging allows jibing with the wing going forward around the mast which makes the maneuver a lot easier. Being able to retract the mast allows a huge decrease in drag and pitch forces during motoring or while at the dock. Wing sails are aerodynamically efficient, have very low drag, can operate at much lower apparent wind angles and provide more power through attack. As on any unstayed rig, there is no load from the shrouds carried into the chain plates, which would in turn transfer the load through the reinforced hull. There is no mast compression either. Instead, the main load on the rotating keel step mast is a bending moment, moment around the deck. This area 
does carry load, but because the rig is light, along with the better aerodynamic efficiency of the sail, the loads here are not unduly high. Put simply, the boat can be lighter without compromising performance. A lack of healing moment is another big benefit of this rig because the wing itself is more efficient at generating lift. The load distribution is more efficient too as the aerodynamic forces act through the mast rather than behind it. You can think of it like a balanced spade rudder where you'd expect the field to be neutral when compared to an old fashioned rudder blade where the area is all behind the stock. The sail doesn't physically deform or backwind like a conventional sail does when you luff. Plus, wing sails operate at a much smaller angle of attack than soft sails. So while they are not that efficient at 20 degrees to the apparent wind, they are still driving. Through maneuvers, tacks are the same as for a conventional rig, while jibes can be executed in the normal way or the rig can be rotated around the bow. Either way, the typical shock loads and drama that go with a hard jibe on a conventional rig boat simply don't exist, as there is nothing for the boom to hit. Only cleating the main sheet would achieve this, and there is no reason to do that. As a result, the boat is extremely nimble. When it comes to reefing, you simply let air pressure out to the lower, lower the mast and haul in one of the reefing lines which operate internally. In fact, the lines work more like internal lazy jacks and prevent the sail from spilling over the edge of the boom. Here in this quick clip, we can see uh, the orientation of the wind versus the actual wing sails themselves in the lower um, uh, I was going to say port side, the lower left side of your screen, and the way it can fully rotate all the way around. You have complete control over this. Now, let's have a look at our new comparables. What are we looking at this week as far as our comparables? <clears throat> We've got five of them. The Mod X70, the Balance 750, their brand new uh, flagship, the Gunboat 70, brand new and utterly gorgeous. The HH-68, uh, interesting boat, uh, a very, uh, <laughs> I saw it at Annapolis in that wildly ridiculous foil that pops out there, uh, but not for the faint of heart, I'm sure. And then the MC-68, quite a beast. Uh, you can see in the profiles here, they're all gorgeous vessels. I mean, it's hard to screw up on a design when you get to this scale at 70 feet or 75 feet. Uh, but of the bunch, I would have to say that the gunboat and the Mod X are the most attractive. The gunboat, I will never forget the first time I saw a gunboat. I was walking up the pier at La Grande Motte, and uh, it was my first major boat show. And here in the water was this glistening metallic teal 68 feet of pure carbon glory I just about wept I suddenly realized where I was looked over there's the gunboat factory and of course the Outremer factory but there is nothing like a gunboat okay let's move on down onto the uh, cabin top the coach roof um, again, there's not a lot going on on the coach roofs of a lot of these, although surprisingly, the Gunboat 70, um, uh, sorry. Okay, let's move down onto the coach roof and into the cockpits. Uh, the Mod X70, of course, has that vast uh, expanse of solar, both on the coach roof and uh, forward on the two hulls. That center dark area is not solar. That is the avant-garde storage area for your, uh, your dinghy. <clears throat> uh, looking at the uh, actual... Um, uh, cockpit, very open, airy. I mean, you're talking about a 70 foot platform with a beam of, you know, 35, 40 feet. I mean, it's staggering. You got an aircraft carrier here. Uh, your helm is, is up forward inside. The Balance 750, just a, a glorious representation of their ongoing beautiful design. In this case, you've got twin helms on either side, um, and you have, they have put um, sun pads with tiltable backs on the coach roof itself. Uh, so that's really a really nice addition. Uh, everything else is, is traditional, beautiful balance. Uh, the Gunboat 70, it, it doesn't have the... Um, uh, the uh, 
flybridge as shown here i had to grab something that was representative of a look down on top of the gunboat 70 uh, there just is nothing available but this is a close representation of it to give you a sense of just how fine those hulls are how huge those trampolines are and how gorgeous this thing looks from the top the hh 68 again quite a vessel um, the the ones that i've seen of course are very much oriented towards speed machines and uh, stripped down even further than a gunboat would be. Uh, gunboats actually, ironically, are quite luxurious inside with the use of beautiful veneers and different materials. Um, but the uh, the HH-68, uh, you can you can see the the general layout there again. Very thin hulls, uh, very huge trampolines out front. Uh, the MC-68, uh, I mean, uh, McConaughey really. This is a fascinating design. I've heard criticism that. Uh, you know, being in that uh, upper flybridge would be like being on a teeter-totter because it's fairly well aft and you're way up high. But it is an exceptional overall design for livability. I mean, you've got uh, tremendous use of a full um, uh, upper flybridge and lounge area. Then you have a massive uh, interior saloon, beautiful uh, cockpit. The cockpit a little smaller than you might expect because the saloon is so large. And they've gone now with a beautiful forward cockpit with full access from the saloon, which I absolutely salute them on. Uh, there's a, a full-out performance cat uh, that has gone with the forward um, interior access uh, cockpit, which I just think is fantastic. Balance 750 and the MC68 or McConaughey both have dedicated leisure forward cockpits with full standard doors that give interior access through the saloon to the forward leisure cockpit. The HH-68 and Gunboat 70 both have forward cockpits with access to them, but these are working cockpits. They are not leisure cockpits. Having said that, you still have interior access to your foredeck. The Mod X-70 has interior access to the foredeck without any cockpit there whatsoever. So really very, very cool. The other thing to note on the Mod X70 that stands out is look at the width of the saloon. There are no weather decks. This thing stretches the full beam of the boat. Can you imagine the sense of space inside this thing? Now, bear in mind that you probably have the same floor square footage that you have in, say, the MC68, but your sense of space will be probably twice the size because it stretches outer hull to outer hull. So looking quickly then at the Mod X70, you've got a, a very nice aft cockpit area uh, moving into a very open, beautifully laid out saloon. On the starboard side, you have a hockey stick shaped settee uh, and, and it's purely a settee it's purely a leisure area and and you know cocktail table in the center on the port side aft you have a beautiful dinette port side forward you have a gorgeous c-shaped galley um, starboard side forward you have a forward facing nav center forward you have the helm station and then you have access up and on to the foredeck and i'll show you how that works so I mean, can you imagine the sense of space in this thing? Staggering. Uh, that dark space there in the, in the center bow uh, is not solar as it is on the two uh, outer hulls. That is actually a uh, rather avant-garde storage area for your, uh, your dinghy, uh, much like uh, the Oyster, what is it, uh, 885, I think it is, has that. Uh, looking due to the Balance 750, Typical, beautiful aft cockpit. Uh, you've got twin helms on twin uh, uh, Versa helms that slide down inside. Actually, sorry, you have one Versa helm on the port side that slides down inside for um, uh, foul weather uh, uh, helming. Um, then moving to the saloon, you have a beautiful C-shaped settee on the uh, starboard side. Forward starboard, you have a forward-facing nav station. 
And then on the port side, uh, you have a, a nice L-shaped galley with a beautiful island. Now, not shown in this particular layout is the optional uh, leisure cockpit, forward leisure cockpit with a full door access out and into it. I believe that option starts on the 680. Um, just a tremendous option on a vessel of this nature. Uh, looking over at the gunboat 70, the, these gunboats, I mean... Not only do they look absolute, there's no way to describe them. They, they're so beautiful. I mean, if they roll into the anchorage, everybody's jaw would drop at this thing. It, 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 it's just, what they've done is, is unbelievable. It's art on water. Um, and what they've also done, though, of course, is build a, an extraordinarily fast and effective uh, catamaran while making it elegant inside. I mean, I was on an older 57 Beautiful veneers, beautiful touches of elegance throughout the vessel. Uh, and of course, it's all custom. Uh, you know, the, the, the amount that these cost, everything is, is custom. You can do whatever you want. But you got a very nice uh, aft cockpit. Uh, beautifully laid out um, uh, saloon here with the uh, uh, settee to the uh, starboard. Uh, and of course, that's also a dinette. Uh, then you've got the island and a uh, uh, lengthwise galley on the port side. You have uh, a beautiful helm station center forward with access to the working forward cockpit there. But look at the, the, the slimness of those, <laughs> those hulls and the expanse of that uh, trampoline. Moving over to the HH-68, um, again, very comfortable aft cockpit. Now, again, this is a highly, highly, highly customized vessel. The one that I saw in Annapolis was stripped down to a, an absolute demon racing machine. So I am sure, again, you can customize this out any way you want. So what we're looking at here is a mere suggestion. And, and the interior is, can be anything that you want it to be. And so it's hard to discuss, you know, uh, exactly what we saw there. Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a pretty nice layout. It's nowhere as expansive as the others, but it's nice. Um, and again, very narrow hulls, vast uh, trampolines out front. The MC-68, the McConaughey, I, I love this uh, overall design. Uh, because of the massive, beautiful salon space that it gives you with a, a vast opening door that completely connects you with the cockpit. On the 68, you have a very decent sized aft cockpit. Um, and of course, you have a beautiful interior saloon that's, that's bigger than all the others, save from now, I think square footage is even bigger than the Mod X. It just wouldn't feel that way. Um, the uh, you got a lovely uh, um, settee uh, dinette to the starboard side. You also have a separate seating area away from that, which is really nice. You have a center island, which looks like you could land an F-16 on it. You have a lengthwise galley on the port side. You have a forward-facing nav. You've got access to a beautiful forward leisure cockpit. I mean, absolutely exceptional. So let's get down into the habitable or the, the, the living areas of the boat in the hulls. Um, the Mod X 70, uh, you can see here, surprisingly, we've got the, 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 the four aft, um, uh, aft uh, uh, bunks or, or berths for the owner and guests. And then you've got quite an assortment. Uh, it's quite a busy drawing, so I won't drag you all the way through it. But you can, again, this is a highly, highly customizable boat. They're using a lot of, uh, 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 they're focused on a lot of recyclable or, or um, uh, sustainable materials in this vessel. Uh, I won't go into a lot of it because quite honestly, there's so limited information. There's something about linen fibers being used in some of the material and some of the, the composites. I'm not exactly sure where or how much. Uh, and then they've, they've got biosourced resins, which I'm not completely familiar with. It's not helium, which is fully recyclable. It's something different. Anyways, uh, a lot of innovation here. Lots of room in those hulls, even though they're incredibly slim, made for performance, but you're talking about a 70-foot vessel. So, I mean, you've got the real estate to play with and still have the performance. Um, moving over to the Balance 750, 
uh, absolutely, you know, gorgeous here. So again, they, you know, on a 75 foot boat, I, I can't imagine you ever wanting a full owner's hull. Uh, unless you want a bowling alley. Uh, but you can see here on the port side hull, they've gotten a thwart ship. That thing just must be massive. Uh, the, the feeling around that thing, your desks and all that lovely stuff. And then forward, you've got the thwart ship. Um, on the, uh, the starboard side, again, you've got a four aft, uh, um, VIP in the aft and then an athwart ship up in the bow. But imagine the real estate in a 75 foot hull. I mean, holy mackerel. The gunboat 70, look at the width of those hulls. My goodness, that in the HH-68. Talk about, you know, knitting needles unbelievable uh again uh you've got your your four aft um uh owner's berth um it, it, unusually on the starboard side it's actually a midships facing aft which actually makes a whole lot of sense when you think about it because that's going to be probably one of the most comfortable areas in the boat and again, I am sure you can customize these layouts 50 ways from Sunday, but you can see the amount of real estate you have in there. And again, the gunboat finishes their stuff so beautifully with such taste. Bless the French. They're just wonderful. Um, HH-68, again, uh, quite a standard uh, format, um, you know, given the, the wild formats that we see in the other manufacturers. No big surprises here. We know what the HH berths look like. They, they, I'm not sure if in the 68 they are true butt scoot, um, but, uh, you know, that, that is their way in all of their other vessels. The MC-68... Um, they you can see the hulls are wider and your owner's hull is, uh, your owner's berth is what? Two thirds of the port side hull. Absolutely expansive, beautiful. Um, you know, uh, what can you say? You're, you're, you can have a dance in there, uh, and you can see the general layout of, of the rest of the, uh, cabins there. Uh, all of them are a thwart ship, full three-sided walk around in a vessel that looks like it's traveling at a million miles an hour when it's standing still in the, uh, in the actual, uh, uh, berth. Okay, let's get into the numbers here. Looking along the top line, holy mackerel, we are in nosebleed area here. So, um, but surprisingly, your Mod X isn't uh, as wild. Now, again, we're talking a 5 million euro base price boat. But uh, we're, we're up here where the most expensive one is another 3.3 million euro above that. So... You know, all in all, when you consider what the Mod X is delivering, 5 million euro isn't bad. The balance um, is at 4.1, 4 uh, and that is tied with the McConaughey at 4.1. Both would seem to me to be, you know, good values given what you're getting. Uh, then, you know, especially in this magnitude of vessel, uh, you know, 4.1 million euro base, uh, what are you going to get an oyster for that? You're going to get, a maybe a five, nine, five, maybe into the sixes. I doubt it though. Uh, I think a five, nine, five would be pushing it at that. So this is a lot of boat for 4.1 million euro. Uh, the, the gunboat, <laughs> there we are at 8.3, the Rolls Royce or Ferrari or Lamborghini of, of boats has the price tag to match. And then the HH-66 at 4.6. Um, again, uh, you know, of the boats, probably, um, not my pick, but given the technology that is involved in an HH-66 and looking across this, uh, you know, it's all, you know, it's not a bad price overall. I know I'm, I'm choking on that because where were you at? But I mean, look at the sailaways. You got 8 million, about 7 million, 13 and a half million, 7 and a half million, 6.6 .6 million. This is, uh, 
yeah, where this is this is win the lottery space. Anyways, let's get going into the real stuff here. So length overall, uh, the the longest one here is of course the uh, Balance Seven Fifty at seventy six feet. That is followed by the Gunboat at seventy two, and then the Mod X at an even seventy. Uh, then it's the McConaughey at sixty seven nine or sixty eight, and the uh, HH at about sixty six. Um, the beam. Uh, so we're looking across them here, and the uh, beamiest boat on these is logically the Balance 750. At uh, you know five feet longer than everything else, but you got 30, 37 uh, feet foot beam. After that, it is the Mod X at a 32 foot beam on a 70 foot boat. Uh, next is going to be uh, a tie between the gunboat and uh, 70 and the McConaughey 68, uh, both at 30.2 uh, feet. And then finally the HH at a svelte 28.5 feet wide. Um, the bridge deck clearance, I got it on three of them. And of the three, the greatest bridge deck clearance is on the balance at uh, 3.67 feet, followed by the HH 3.34 and the gunboat at 3.3. Uh, as far as light ship displacement, heading across these, the lightest of the bunch, no surprise here, at uh, 18 metric tons is the HH 39,682 pounds. Um, the next one, and uh, not a big surprise either, is the gunboat at a svelte 20, kilo, uh, 20 metric tons um, or 44,000 pounds. Uh, after that, um, actually, my apologies, I'm wrong. Uh, the next one after the HH is the McConaughey at 19 and a half tons or 39,000 pounds. Almost the same as the gunboat at twenty thousand or at twenty uh, tons or forty four thousand pounds. Uh, now, having said that, the uh, McConaughey is uh, what five, four feet uh, shorter than the gunboat. So, all in all, the gunboat has the lead there. Um, then we've got the Mod X at uh, 23 uh, tons or 50,000 pounds and finally uh, the balance which of course is the longest five feet longer than the Mod X at uh, th uh, 32 tons or 70,000 pounds. So all of these you know given the size of them remarkably uh, light vessels. Um, payload carrying capacity I got it on four of the five and the best payload capacity is the balance at 9.5 9 metric tons or 29,000 pounds. And that is surprisingly, um, you know, the next one is the gunboat at uh, 7 tons or 15,000 pounds. Uh, the upwind sail area, <clears throat> as we head across here, the leader is the Balance 750, which isn't a big surprise, uh, with uh, 341.6 square meters. Now, I have to tilt, tip, tip my hat at Balance. These folks publish every statistic, every specification that you'd want, including upwind sail area, assuming uh, a 100% a, uh, forward triangle. So everywhere else you're wondering, is that a Genoa? If it is, is it 100, 110, 120? Uh, is it a self-tacking jib? All of these things. But balance put in comparable statistics. And uh, the 750 is a highly customizable vessel and brand spanking new. Uh, so they, they don't publish the all of the stuff in yellow down below, the interior area, air, exterior area, all that good stuff. But they do on every one of their other boats like the 526, the 442, and 4, 4, uh, 482. Um, they're the only one that does. Right down to storage uh, um, uh, volume, interior and exterior. So hats off to balance. You know, we really do need to standardize the specifications that are thrown out in this industry. It's really kind of Mickey Mouse right now. 
Um, so again, upwind sail area, it's the balance at 341.6 square meters. After that, it's the gunboat at 290 square meters. Uh, then it's the uh, McConaughey at 257, the Mod X at 250 square meters, and the HH at 233 square meters. Now, it should be noted that on the Mod X with the asymmetric wing sails, inflatable wing sails, theoretically the power that is delivered equates to 35% more square footage in a standard sail. So you'd tack on another, what, uh, just under 100 square meters to be fully comparable. You're probably, you know, comparable to the, uh, the balance um, um, in, in, you know, when you're comparing apples to oranges in these uh, technologies. Uh, as far as engines, um, again, the Mod X uh, does not have any fossil fuel on board. It doesn't have gas, it doesn't have uh, uh, petrol, it, it doesn't have diesel, it has electricity. And that's it. Uh, the only impact on the environment from its drive perspective is what it takes to deliver, uh, you know, a 230 kilowatt hour battery bank, which is quite something, but we won't talk about that one. Um, so uh, you've got uh, 2 times 40 kilowatts, which is the equivalent of 2 times 54 horsepower, which is, you know, pretty low given the size of this thing. It's about half what everybody else is. The balance is showing 2 times 110. Uh, the, the gunboat is twin 80s. The HH is twin 80s. And the McConaughey is twin 80s. Uh, fuel tank, of course, on the Mod X, we measure uh, fuel as uh, power. And as I said, it's 230 uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, across the rest, it's the balance in the lead at 2,000 liters of fuel and 1,500 liters of water. Uh, and then uh, the next one is the McConaughey at 1,600 and 1,000. And both the gunboat and HH uh, 66 are about the same, you know, 756 and change. Uh, the only one, and again, bless their hearts, even on a brand new boat like the 750 that lists Blackwater capacity is the balance at 250 liters or 66 gallons. Okay, getting into some of the more technical stuff. Uh, now, I, I'm real light on the Mod X70 here. There's not a lot of information on this, but as best I can tell, it's epoxy and carbon fiber over a foam core. There's talk about linen fibers being used in this. I don't know how, I don't know where. Uh, there's talk about uh, a percentage of uh, biosourced resin. I don't even really understand what that is. Um, but I'll leave that to you guys in the comments to educate me. Um, so as we look across here, uh, as far as, you know, quality of hull and all of that sort of stuff, all of these are so exceptionally, uh, up there in the stratosphere that uh, how can you choose between them? I mean, I, I am sure that, uh, Kirk will have a, a comment or two here on it. Uh, he's, he's an engineer. He can tell the difference between these, but they're all looking, uh, like, uh, carbon fiber, e-glass, pure epoxy um, on foam cores. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, now the gunboat is might have a, a, an edge, uh, as would the uh, HH-66, uh, because they're both pure carbon fiber boats. But that is debatable. Certainly it's an edge when it comes to weight, um, but it, is it truly an edge versus uh, e-glass uh, and carbon fiber for, uh, reinforcements with uh, epoxy resin? Uh, again, I am going to hope that my friend Kirk or maybe uh, Stainless Steel Wombat pipe up in the comments and educate me on this stuff, but they're all incredible hulls. What can you say? System voltages, these are all 12, 24 volt. Uh, I won't go into battery bank capacity. I only could only find two of them. That's the Mod X. Of course, it's claim to fame. And then the HH has uh, 8.6 kilowatt hours. And I'm sure, again, up in this stratosphere, all of that is customizable, right along with the um, 
the, the amount of solar, uh, all that good stuff. Now, getting into the performance indicators here, sale area to displacement or an indicator of power. The champion here, of course, is the gunboat at uh, close to 40. Um, the uh, next one is the McConaughey, surprisingly enough, at 37.3. The Balance and the HH are tied at 34.4, and the Mod X is at 31.4. Now, <clears throat> the Mod X, again, because it's a different technology, I'm not sure how relevant the uh, sail area to displacement is here, because the sail area you've got is a completely different technology and configuration. So uh, that the impact on power, according to Mod X, is a, a 35 plus 35%. So, uh, you know, you can, uh, we'll have to argue that one out when we get to know more about the Mod X. Displacement to hull length at the waterline. Here it's the lowest number wins, and of course that's the gunboat at 52.7. Uh, next is the McConaughey at 55.6, which is a bit of a surprise. Next is the HH at 64.7. Next is the Mod X at 68.9. And finally, the Balance at 71.4. Okay, uh, KSP, or an indicator of theoretical speed at 10 knots of wind. Uh, so, you know, basically what is the percentage of wind speed you can drag out of this? Um, the, the, the winner here is the gunboat showing uh, 113%, followed by the McConaughey at 108, the HH at 1.01, the balance at 1 to 1, and the Mod X showing 96%. But again, I am not sure how relevant KSP is to an asymmetric wing sail driven boat. I'll leave that to you to research. Again, stainless steel wombat, I'm sure you got an answer for me. Let me know. If you're enjoying the content, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button, then share the channel with a couple of friends and hit the like button. It's free and really helps the channel. You can also join our crew on Patreon where you can enjoy ad-free viewing as well as downloads of the Excel specification and PowerPoint layout comparisons while helping the channel for a few bucks a month. You can find a link to the Naval Gazing at Camp David Patreon channel in the description below where you can also click to receive our free ebook and information on some really cool virtual sailing training. And speaking of cool, my friends at catamaranshow.com have developed an amazing website and database of every catamaran available and scheduled to launch that allows you to do selectable in-depth comparisons of three cats at a time. They're also working on an incredible virtual tour and on-the-fly configurator that provides the option of fully immersive virtual reality with the appropriate 3D goggles. This is an incredible resource for anyone considering catamaran purchase. Have a look by clicking in the link in the description description below. Okay, hopping on board. What would Sylvia say? <laughs> I have no doubt in 70 foot of incredible luxurious yacht that Sil Sylvia would say absolutely no problem. But look at this. What a fabulous aft section. That aft cockpit, beautiful uh, seating that allows you to look aft or forward, beautiful sunning areas, beautiful side uh, um, relaxation beds there. Uh, you can see how the actual uh, cabin stretches from hull to hull. There are no weather decks. You can see that central helm that we talked about before. But what a fabulous relaxation area uh, where you can just sit out here and enjoy yourself with full access to the folks in the saloon. Speaking of the saloon, let's head in, have a quick look here. There is that lovely central helm station I was talking about. And now let's have a quick go up those stairs. Here is the access I was speaking to you about uh, up and on to the uh, forward, uh, the foredeck. You can also see the storage for the uh, the dinghy there. Lovely foredeck, lots of space and area. I'm not sure if they do the same thing as Oyster does where the dinghy goes. When it's out, they put pillows and stuff and turn that into a, a lovely embedded uh, lounge area. But you can see you've got faux front cockpit area there uh, just near the windshield on either uh, pontoon. Um, what a, I mean, absolutely gorgeous. So, uh, let's head back down inside now through those nice big access doors. I just love that access up into the four, uh, four peaks. 
Um, and we're going to have another look at this helm. What a, a sense of control here. Bearing in mind, you're not worried about winches and, cle and, and clutches and all of this sort of stuff. It's fully automated. Have a look at this beautiful dinette. Uh, um, masses of seating. What can you do there? Eight, nine, ten. You, uh, you, you, you could uh, a dozen people around that table, looking around the expansive interior. Again, you got that incredible sense of space because this stretches from one side to the other. Look at that. Look, can you imagine what that feels like? And you have that beautiful upper uh, day bed there on the starboard side. Um, I mean, absolutely gorgeous in this massive settee. I don't know how many you could sit there, but we're going to uh, go down now into the starboard hull, if I'm getting my orientation correct here, and uh, into one of the, uh, the suites here uh, in the aft. Uh, so that you can get a sense of the the space and comfort that you have back here. Again, the width of the the uh, hulls, even in a performance machine like this, you've got full three side access. And look at the size of those incredible aft and side windows. Lots of space, comfort, airiness. Uh, what a what a wonderful wonderful area to be. So overall, that that gives you a sense of this vessel and what it can do. Um, I mean, looking at it, she, she's not an ugly vessel like a lot of these sort of um, avant-garde ones are. And look at how you literally just sail into your anchorage and slowly lower your sails. Remember, you've been hydro generating, what is it, three kilowatts per hour. Um, and you've got uh, your solar panels fully generating. Your sails now are down. Uh, your stability in the water, because you don't have that big mast and weight uh, way up in the air above you, is far more comfortable. Uh, and you just have a fantastic, entertaining platform right there. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Now, what are we going to compare this to on the pre-owned market? This should be entertaining. Well, uh, first up, we are looking at the HH66. Uh, so uh, remember now, we are looking at uh, a comparative of uh, sale away price, which I calculate as base plus 50%. In this case, that takes us to 8.1 million USD to sail away in a brand new Mod X 70. Here we're looking at a 2020, so a four-year-old uh, HH66, and they're asking uh, $4 million. Now, Totally depends because it's such a customizable boat, but um, I, it's so hard to say in this case because what you're getting with the Mod X is, is a completely different animal. Um, you know, and if you're talking 4 million versus 8 million, you got millions in the bank anyway. So it's, it's more of what you want. I, I would be tempted to go with the Mod X on this one, quite honestly because it is a true sailboat, like the old days. There, you know, there is no diesel engine. Um, uh, more, because of the controllability of those sails, the lack of flogging, the ability to rotate them around the mast, the ability to drop them at will, I'm able to sail in and out of moorings. Like, it, it really is a totally different kettle of fish. So I'm afraid even at the 4 million Delta, if I had this kind of cash, I'd go with the Mod X. Next up, we are looking at, oh, okay, this is avant-garde, a 2020 Trimaran Hansteiger X1, 72 feet. They want $4.5 million. Now, this is a wild ride. Uh, you know, I, I would be tempted to go with this one. Uh, I, again, as a pure sailboat, I'm sure it's not anything near what the Mod X is, but it, it has a, a use of space and a, and a, a look to it that um, is quite extraordinary. Now, you know, attractive. Well, depending on who you are, it ain't a gunboat. Um, it, it, it's got to be your cup of tea. So I'd be tempted. We, we, we'd see what would happen. I'm not sure what Sylvie would say. I think she'd go with the Mod X. Next up, we are looking at a, f a four-year-old Fountain Peugeot Allegra 67 for 3.2 million bucks. Lovely boat, completely different animal. Um, again, if money is no object, which in this stratosphere it isn't, I'd do the Mod X. 
Uh, finally, uh, Privilege uh, 640. That's a 2021 three-year-old boat. They're asking 3.6. This is, and I know many of you are cringing at this, is the only one that I would actually hesitate on, simply because Privilege are such a beautifully executed boat. I know what the interior of this would look like. Now, having said that, I would still need a crew to run this. The Mod X, I don't. It's just so easy to run. You don't need a crew to manage two wing sails. Uh, and I could single hand a Mod X 70, whereas I couldn't do it here. So no Mod X. So Mod X gets it all the way across. Okay. Mono hull heresy. God, what are we looking at here? We got to go 20% over 70 feet. So we're now looking at 84 to 90 feet here. Our first up is a 2019 Oyster 825, an 83 foot wonder. Uh, they're asking 4.2. Um, look, uh, I don't think I'd go with the 825. It was an 885. I might, uh, but it, still an extraordinary boat. Uh, next up, we are looking at a 2018 Baltic 85. So we're looking at a six-year-old boat. They're asking 7.8 million, not a hope in Hades. It would be the Mod X. And guys, that's all I could find to compare to this. <laughs> okay, the Dave score. How did she score? Okay, now, oh, yeah, she pops up right away. Duh. I guess at 8 million bucks, she would. Okay, what does she look like? So uh, she's scoring 82 out of 100 uh, with interior elegance at 8. Uh, the reason it's not higher, I, d I don't know how customizable it is. Based on the renders is all I'm going on. They're using a lot of eco-sensitive materials and, and uh, you know, they're just not as elegant as some of the other materials that can be used. But I'll bet you you could jam this to a 10 depending on, on what their, uh, their um, uh, mill, mill shop is like. Uh, exterior, I'm uh, giving it a uh, seven uh, on elegance. It, it is quite an, uh, an elegant exterior, uh, although again, our my your perception of taste is is uh, impacted by what you're used to, and of course you're not used to seeing the outside of this the way it looks, but it still looks very nice. Comfort on the interior, I'm going to give it an eight. On the exterior, I'll give it an eight. Quality, I'm going to give it an eight in anticipation. It could easily be a nine or a ten. Performance uh, is an eight. Um, and lazy. Now that could easily be influenced by the reality of, of what the wing sails actually do out there compared to typical configurations. We don't know that yet fully. Lazy sailor is a 10. You, you can't get any more lazy sailor. A uh, 70 foot catamaran that can be single handed without worry. Um, condo an eight, uh, geek 10 for sure. And value for money. I'm going to give it a solid seven. So, I mean, that puts her, uh, way up there with all the best in the business. Well, that's our waves, wine, art, and ideas for another week. And it is an exceptional week with an exceptional vessel. It is truly an Enviro boat with no compromises, no diesel, no fossil fuels on board. I salute these guys, the team at Mod X, for really going out there and seeing what this will do. I'm excited to see what these wing sails perform like and how this entire concept rolls out. So thumbs up, guys. Keep it going. Let's see how this all works. I will leave you this week with Henry Matisse and the Bay of Tangier from 1912. Hope you enjoy it. We'll see you back here next week. Cheers. <laughs>